So I want to put the slot over here so that this press plate can move back and forth. Now I'm going to temporarily turn off the canvas and I'll turn off the visibility of this part but I want the sketch to be visible and so I'll turn off the visibility of the body. I'll start a new sketch on the XY plane and I'll do P for project to project this line into my current sketch and then I'm going to hide the sketch one and let's go ahead and hide these joints as well for now and then I'm going to draw a line along this line I want to be careful I don't get it at the midpoint not at that midpoint so I'll do somewhere along this line and I'll come out to here not all the way to the end of that line about like that and so if I look at the at the canvas so I'm putting in and I, I, I might have dragged it I'd be careful I don't get it to the midpoint of this line and so then I'm going to draw a line coming down from this line and I as I did that I was careful not to get it perpendicular to that line and so let's turn off this canvas for a minute so this line should be able, free to move it shouldn't be vertical it shouldn't be perpendicular to this line and I'm going to dimension the angle between this line and this line and I'm going to do that as 102 0.15 and I normally wouldn't use a angle dimension going out to two decimal places like that but I'll explain in a few minutes where I came up with that angle. I'm going to dimension the aligned length of this line as 0.975 and I'll dimension the distance from this point back to the origin that horizontal distance as 1.785 we see that this line turns black, this one turns black, except for the white dot. We'll dimension the aligned length of this line as 0.9. And now that turns black. And then we'll draw an arc coming off the end of this, and then a line, and then another arc coming up here. So I'll go into the line command, but I'm going to click and hold to drag an arc off of the end of this line. And I'm going to come up about uh, like uh, that and then I'll come out here with a line tangent to that arc and then I'll click and drag an arc up to this point and uh, then I want this point to be over here somewhere on this line right here and uh, let's go ahead and put some dimensions in here so I'll dimension the uh, radius of this arc and I got the distance between those centers Right, so I'll dimension the radius of this arc and that radius 0.445. I'll dimension the radius of this arc as 1.075. And so then I want this point to be on this line. So I'll do coincident this point to this line. And I got the, a solution opposite of what I wanted. And so I'm going to undo that last step and I will uh, drag there's a short little line up here uh, someplace and let's see it's already backwards here I'll drag this line up so that we get the alternate solution and so I'll drag that up and uh, now I'll make that point coincident so I'll do coincident this point to this line it all turns black it's all fully defined. I'll finish that sketch and I'll turn on the visibility of the solid body and then we'll do an extrude cut through that. So I'll do extrude. I'll uh, select that sketch. Now the sketch is down inside there. I'm not able to get the profile. I'll do a long left click and with that long left click I get a select other command that I can get this face, the profile, or the face on the opposite side. I want to get this profile of course and I'll tell it to go symmetric and we'll tell it to go through all and so we've cut that slot into there if I go back to my canvas so I've cut a slot here and then I need to cut a slot for this peak part of the mechanism for the pin going through here to rotate up and down and so let's turn off that canvas for a moment and then I'm going to turn on the visibility of the first sketch and I'll turn off 
the visibility of the solid body for a moment. So our origin is right here in this location and I really don't need that first sketch visible. I'll start a new sketch on the XY plane and I'm going to do a center point slot and so I'll go to a, a slot. I'll do a center point slot from the origin coming over to say below the origin to about right here above the origin about like that and then we'll put some dimensions on here let's draw a horizontal line from here over to the arc in the center of the slot let's change this horizontal line to construction and I'll draw a line from here up to here and we'll also draw a line from here to here we'll change these two lines to construction so I'll hit X on the keyboard change out to construction and then I'll put in my angle dimension from here up to here let's do that as an angle of 25 and then we'll do an angle from here to here an overall angle of 33 I will dimension the length length of this line or the radius of this arc let's do the length of that line as 0.735 and when I did that it changed it so drastically that distance from here to here collapsed so I'll undo that and I'll put in that dimension first so I'll dimension the offset distance from here to here as 0.332 and then I'll change this dimension to the 0.735 okay I'll turn the visibility of the body back on for that component and then we'll cut this slot through this component and so I'll do extrude I'll do the long left click so I get the select other I'll get that profile I'll tell it to go symmetric I want to go through all and so we have uh, that component uh, finished if I turn on the visibility of the other sketches so we just made a slot for the pin that's going to go through here for it to move up and down. Again, if we go to Revolution 1 and we do drive joints, we can check. And so we can actually use this slot as a limiting uh, geometry in how far the handle can be moved. So either increase or decrease the length of that slot to control the motion next if we go back to our canvas I'm going to do this handle and so we'll lay out that sketch and then we'll extrude it so let's turn off the visibility of the canvas for a moment I'm going to turn off the visibility of the other components and yeah, so let's turn off the handle anvil and so I have the handle lever sketch or component visible I'll make that my active component and I'm going to go in here and edit this sketch now I can't remember if earlier when I was testing out that motion I turned off the horizontal constraint on here I'm going to put that horizontal back on here for now and so I'll, I'll select that line uh, it's all fully constrained I'll change this to construction line and then I'm going to draw a circle at the end of this line and then I'm going to make a line coming down so I'll click click and drag I don't let go of the mouse it puts that tangent on here and I'm going to come down about like that and let's go ahead and, and dimension the length of that line the aligned length as 1.5 and I'm going to draw a line tangent horizontally up here and then I'm going to come up at an angle and then I'll come over horizontally again and I'm going to trim out this arc between here and here so I'll do trim I'll trim out that arc I'll dimension it let's do this as 0.3 and I'm going to dimension the aligned length of this line as 0.175 and I'll do the angle between this line and this line I'll do that angle as 35 
and I'll uh, do the length of this line as 0.4 and I'll do an angle between this line and this line now it's gonna appear almost vertical because I'm gonna do a small angle of 2.4 degrees so we see that all of this turns black and the angle dimension popped way out here in space so I'm gonna bring that back here into my profile uh, so that we can see this better and I still have a white dot right here so let's dimension the uh, distance from here to here and we'll do that as 2.075 now if we com compare this to our canvas so made this a little bit longer straighter here and uh, but we see their curve over here in the angle from the original artwork all right then I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to this line so I'm going to click here and see vertical is almost the same as perpendicular if you scrub this line it sh you should see when you move it here that puts that perpendicular constraint on there and I'll do that 0.175 for the aligned length and then I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to this line so I'll scrub that line I'll come down here and I see that it's going to be perpendicular I'll do that as 6.275 and then I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to this line so I'll draw a line from here and I want it perpendicular not vertical and make sure it shows a perpendicular symbol 0.29 and then I'm going to draw a tangent arc from here over to here. So I'll do a tangent arc from this endpoint so that it puts a tangent to this line over to this point. That all turns dark. It's fully constrained. I review my dimensions, make sure that I have the dimensions that I intended, then we'll extrude our geometry now if I finish this sketch and I turn on the visibility of the other components and then I animate or drive this first joint so we can see how as I move that handle it uh, we can visualize the motion so we don't have to create all of our geometry we could do it with a real basic free body diagram with our linkages or we can start to put in our geometry as we've done here and then start creating the solid geometry.